Gentlemen, welcome to Essential Style. Today we have a very special video that's all about wardrobe items that you need in your 30s to dress for success. Because let's face it, your image and your wardrobe is the first thing that people see when they meet you. Whether you're navigating the professional world or just looking to step up your style, these wardrobe items will be your trusted companions along your way in your journey to success. You're gonna love this video, let's get right into it. So when it comes to material possessions, I lean a little bit more on the minimal side of things. This means that I have fewer items, but I'm able to spend more money on higher quality items that are more versatile. And just a quick reminder to consider subscribing if you found this useful, definitely share this video out as well. And there are some Amazon affiliate links below. First item on the list is going to be shoes. You need a good pair of dress shoes that you can wear with a suit or sport coat for dressy formal occasions. You need a comfortable pair of casual shoes like these Cole Hans for when you're going to be on your feet or walking for a long period of time. You don't want to go as dressy as dress shoes, but you still want to look better than if you were just wearing a pair of sneakers. You're going to need an awesome pair of boots like these Thursdays that you can wear in casual situations and when the weather's not that great. Now, I did a video recently on just some shoes that I would buy if I started from zero. It's going to be linked above right now. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. I promise you, you're going to love that video. Socks. You need appropriate socks for the occasion that you're dressing for. My pick is just the Bomba Standard Athletic Socks. I mostly wear them in gray and I also have a couple of pairs in navy blue as well. Why not black socks? Why not white socks? Well, black socks can actually look really good at first, but then they can start to fade and they're going to look pretty rough and they're just not going to look good. White socks, you should never try to dress up white socks. That should be a given. White socks belong in the gym or they belong in casual situations only. Shirts. Unless you're hitting the gym or going out and exercising, nix the t-shirts all together and always wear a polo shirt instead. Polo shirts are going to give you that same feeling and that same casual coolness as a t-shirt. Polo shirt's gonna do a better job of building up your shoulders, slimming down your waist just because you do have that collar framing your face nicely. Now my personal favorite for polo shirts is going to be Collars & Co. They've got these nice stiff collars that are always gonna stand up straight. You're never gonna get that bacony floppy collar and they're just a really nice polo shirt. A bit expensive, but definitely worth it if you could afford it. Now another more affordable option for polo shirts is this one from Under armor. I got this one on Amazon last summer. I think it runs for between $20 and $30. This is definitely a lot cheaper. So if you can't afford the polo shirts from the Collars & Co, this is a great alternative. Only thing I don't like about this one is you do have this badge right here. But if you get it in dark blue, you really can't see the Under Armour badge. That might be a better option for you. You're also going to want a couple of other long sleeve options as well, such as a light blue Oxford shirt, a white dress shirt, a pattern dress shirt. Now these long sleeve options are going to look better with a suit or a sport coat. Plus if you live in a cooler climate, long sleeve options is going to be better as well. They're going to keep you a lot warmer, especially the Oxford cloth is actually a much warmer material than the polos or the standard dress shirts. Jeans. You're going to want a nice pair of slim, dark wash jeans that you can dress up and dress down. Dark wash slim jeans are going to be the most versatile option that you can get. I can always recommend the Levi's 511s. These fit me the best. One note, if you are going to try the Levi's 511s, definitely size up in the waist like I did. What this is going to do is make the jeans a lot more comfortable, but it's going to retain that nice, sleek, slim look that you're going for. Belts. You're going to need a few leather ones like this one and this one. And you're also going to need at least one casual belt like this one. Now, these two are actually from Anson Belt. I still have this old Allen Edmonds one. It's in the walnut color to match my walnut dress shoes. You should always be matching your belt with your shoes. For example, if you like the walnut strands from Allen Edmonds, you definitely should be pairing a belt like this, which is pretty much exactly the same color. This is gonna take your look literally to the next level. But something in the color like this or this, that medium brown, these shoes are gonna look better with the Anson Belt medium brown belt. You don't have to get it perfect, but you can see that this one does match pretty well with both of these shoes. Now that medium brown belt is actually the belt that I'm wearing today. I am wearing my Dark Soul Kohan original grand wingtips. This matches perfectly, especially from this distance. You can just see how good this looks since the belt and the shoes match so well with each other. Chino pants. Khaki colored are going to be your best option here. Definitely don't go too dark or too light. Something like a medium khaki is going to be amazing. It's going to be the most versatile option that you can. Now, these are from Banana Republic. They are a very dressy type of chino pants. And you can also go with something like these. These are the Levi's 511 five pocket chinos. You can see they look very similar to a pair of jeans. They're just made out of a more twill-like lighter pattern or lighter 
fabric, both in color and in texture, than jeans. They're not actually denim. So these are gonna be a great option if you wanna wear your chinos, mostly in casual environments. But for maximum versatility, definitely go with the dressier style chino. You're still gonna be able to dress these down, especially if you get them in that versatile khaki color. Now, if you wanna stay super minimal, I would definitely just invest in two or three pair of these, the dressier chino and that medium khaki. They're gonna be great in the summer, spring, winter, fall. It's gonna look good. You're gonna be able to dress it up and dress it down. But if you wanna add more versatile options and have a bit more variety of how to dress, definitely invest in some medium gray as well as navy blue chinos. Now, one big advantage to the color gray and the color navy, especially the color navy, if you get them in this dressy like silhouette, not the five pocket jean style, these are going to be able to stand in for your dress pants. You won't have to invest in any dress pants since you already have more formal chinos. And most people probably aren't gonna know the difference between a pair of these or a pair of dress pants. You could probably say these are dress pants and people are gonna say, cool, no problem anyway. You're gonna need one well-fitted suit that's either in a navy or a charcoal gray. My personal pick is navy. I have this one in a more classic navy. I've had this one for a long time. This is more like a business interview, more sophisticated suit. And this one is more of a medium, brighter blue. It's not super bright, not super dark, but this is my version of a lighter colored suit just because I can still wear it in a business environment if I need to. I can wear some awesome colored shoes like I am right now matching the belt. So my personal preference are blue suits. If you like charcoal gray, definitely get charcoal gray or a medium gray. Gray's gonna be more versatile. Navy's gonna be a bit more classic looking and match a wider variety of skin tones. Instead of getting a casual suit, I would recommend just getting a sport coat or two. Same thing applies. Get it in a color that you like. You could see medium blue, bit brighter of a blue. The sport coats are gonna be a bit more of a versatile option for most of us. You just have a lot more versatility in the way that you can dress down. Take this outfit for example. This outfit looks pretty dressy, but once I remove the sport coat, you can see that it's nothing more than a light blue polo shirt and a pair of khaki colored chinos, the Levi's 511 five pocket. And if I went one step further and untucked the actual shirt, now it's super casual. So you can go from super casual to pretty dressy, pretty fast, just by throwing the sport coat on and off like so. Whereas with a suit with a matching jacket and pants, if you take that jacket off, it still looks like you're wearing half a suit and it still can look a little bit less complete than if you were just to wear an outfit that looks good on its own, but throw that sport coat over. Same rules apply to sport coats. I find that blue is a lot easier to match, especially if you're wearing khaki colors, gray colors like me. Something in a medium blue like this one. This one's a bit more of a brighter blue, but this is more of a warmer fabric for those winter months. Now, if you do have more than one suit, then you can definitely start to break away that casual suit and wear it as a sport jacket as well. It's gonna be easier if it's in more of a medium blue like this one, more medium blue. The shoulder pads aren't as built up. You can do this if the suit is not as formal, but I wouldn't recommend doing this if this is your only suit because you don't wanna put a lot of wear and tear on the jacket because it's going to start to look too different than the suit pants. Sweaters. You need to have a couple of sweaters that you can throw on over your polo shirt or your long sleeve Oxford or dress shirts in the fall and winter months. I will always recommend the Merino wool v-neck sweater. Reason being is I just find for how thin and lightweight the Merino wool is, it keeps me super warm, but it also doesn't really cause me to overheat either. So it, Merino wool has got to be some sort of like magic material. You definitely want to go slim with this one. You can see this one's pretty tight along my shoulders, along my waist. Now the reason I recommend v-neck over crew neck is because you just get a lot more versatility and the ability to dress up that v-neck sweater as well wearing a collar shirt underneath it. Now longtime viewers probably know what I'm going to say next but another reason why you should go with a thin sweater is you just have a lot more options as far as layering goes. As you can see I'm wearing a pretty well-fitted sport coat right now but because there is no added bulk to the merino wool sweater I'm able to wear it underneath a slim fit garment like this no problem at all. Now you can go with some other options as well like the shawl collar cardigan or some of those quarter zips. Just be aware that the chunkier the sweater and the bigger and bulkier it is, it's going to be much harder to layer it underneath something slim like a sport coat or a suit jacket or even something like a slim pea coat. It's just gonna be a lot harder to wear a piece of outerwear over it, which is why I would always recommend a thinner sweater from wool rather than a thicker cotton sweater like a cable knit shawl collar cardigan. Now for colors, it's really up to you. I like the navy blue. I find the navy blue is very dressy, but a lot of times I do end up wearing the gray merino wool v-neck just because this pairs a little bit easier with jeans. And you can see just how well the navy blue pairs with a pair of khaki colored chinos. This is a pretty classic 
classic no-brainer type combo. It looks very well, but it can start to get a bit trickier if you match it with a pair of jeans like these Levi's 511s. Now you can see there's still a bit of contrast here with a dark navy sweater and the slightly faded dark wash Levi's 511s. But while this does work, you can absolutely do this. 99% of the time, I would pick the gray sweater if I'm wearing a pair of dark jeans or a pair of dark blue pants. It just contrasts a lot easier. It's obvious that it contrasts, whereas the navy sweater and the navy jeans can look a little bit too close in certain scenarios. And when in doubt, you should always aim to contrast your pieces together. It's just gonna make you look that much better and that much more stylish. Jackets. You need one lightweight jacket for warmer spring and cooler summer days, one medium weight jacket for more of like those mid fall, mid spring days where it's not too hot, not too cold, and one heavyweight jacket for those cold, cold winter days and cold winter months. Now I did a video a while ago about some winter essentials. It's going to pop up right now. Definitely check that out if you haven't seen it already. But at the time of filming this video, we're currently just ending winter going into spring. So you should definitely think about investing in some of the more lighter weight options nowadays, unless you find a screaming deal on a nice winter jacket, definitely go for it. But your needs may vary. Go by what your budget says and go by what you can afford. So that's it. Those are some basic wardrobe essentials that you can start wearing in your 30s in order to dress for success. So whether you're trying to look more professional at work or in your career, or you just want to step up your style game when you go into more of casual environments like family get-togethers, maybe going out to some trivia nights. This is going to be a great starting point and a great foundation for you to look and feel your absolute best. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Reminder to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you found this video helpful, if you found it useful. Have a great day, night, weekend, whatever you're watching this. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.